you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, thank you. Can you hear me? What a wonderful praise and worship. I was saying in my heart, I think, I believe you are the best praise worshipers. Uh, I don't know about in the church, but in the women's ministry, you are the best praise worshipers. Uh, we want to thank the Lord this morning as we welcome again. Uh, our respected seniors who are among us, together with our Bishop, Bishop Maoko, and our administrator, Rumbi. And uh, this morning, we want to welcome uh, Pastor Paul, who has joined us. I think that's an honor to be in the ladies' meeting because normal ladies, they don't want anybody there. They want to be on their own. And I want to bring you this morning special greetings from our Father, the Apostle and Servant of God. Uh, yeah. His heart is here. You saw me walking away. I wanted to make sure that uh, he has given me all the instructions I need to do because I am not here on my own. I am here under the authority and the sending of his apostle and servant of God. So since morning I have been trying to get through him. I couldn't because the people who were supposed to put me through, some were in the shower, maybe some were in the gym, but uh, at last I got him. And so uh, he was greeting you. His love for the women, uh, his, ch his children, his daughters is very, very great. We thank God for giving us a man uh, who understands us as women, who understands us as women. Uh, because if he did not understand us, we could not be here. We could not be what we are. I mean, jumping and uh, being called a pastor, being called an elder, being called a deacon, and being free to minister in the church of God. You don't get it in many places. Uh, women, they are to put flowers and make sure that the church is swept uh, properly. Uh, women, they are to uh, just sit in the benches and make tea so that people, when they finish the church, they can go and drink tea. But not in forward in faith. Not in forward in faith. I mean, in the year of thanking God, if we did not thank God for that, then we need to begin to thank God for that to say, God, I want to thank you for bringing me into this ministry of forward in faith where you have raised your servant who does not look at gender, but he looks at what is inside that God has put in there. So this is a, a great uh, favor from the Lord, a great favor from the Lord. And uh, we are still continuing so that uh, when we leave this place, we will be completely out of 
captivity, and we will see it like a dream. But then, of course, we will laugh in the spirit, and our tongue will be singing, and the people will say, oh, look at them. They are out of captivity. They have come back now, being out of captivity. It's only the word of God that can do that to us. When we uh, put the word of God in our hearts, then it will change us. We want to thank the Lord. Since we began, we have been hearing uh, very uh, precious teachings, even yesterday in the afternoon and in the, uh, in the morning and in the evening, and we are continuing. And we are not afraid because we know that our Father, the Apostle and Servant of God, is raising up his hands unto the Lord for us because his heart is here. Amen. 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 Shall we bow our heads and pray? Maretha leboha kariha shikumahena wangwaya niko shini kaite wale mela rikathandulu washto pendahe. Tambela rikathani washkumbu ya nakahana noya. Kambumbu we libo narakatari vosa nahe. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Take over now by your Holy Spirit, the Lord God of Ezekiel, who through his Holy Spirit opens the mind of our understanding. Let it be so that the mind of our understanding will be opened to be able, Father God, to grasp all that you want us to know and all that you want us to be. As I decrease and submit under your authority, you increase and take over, anoint my lips. We thank you, Father God, even as I say, by the no ordinary anointing to break every power of darkness. I break every power of darkness, of not understanding that may try to linger in here. In the mighty name of Jesus, as I declare the Lordship of Jesus now, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I won't stay here for long. I read something from this book yesterday that our uh, father was led by the Holy Spirit uh, to write. And I read about the uh, Thursday uh, fellowships, some there are on Saturday, some there are on Wednesday, whatever day, as long as it is a, a women's fellowship. But then I didn't read about the single uh, women. Here it says, a single woman is a single parent without a husband or a boyfriend. She is either widowed, divorced, uh, or a divorcee, single by choice, uh, having children but unwilling to marry, or the hit and run, or the cheated ones. A single woman is taught to respect herself and have, and have hope in God, particularly one who has been frustrated before. She must realize that the Lord is our all-sufficient God who cares for widows, divorcees, and the fatherless, and that he will supply all her needs. She must also lean on Jesus, for inner healing. And for years, God revealed to me the burdens of single women who experience extreme difficulties to find comfort and identity in the church. Single women used to cry to me all the time, and my pastors and other believers did not understand how they could help the singles in their problems. The burden was to build a well-rounded, God-fearing single woman through restoring her dignity and self-esteem through the word of God. 
most singles to believe that to solve their problems they needed a boy most singles believed that to solve their problems they needed a boyfriend and in the process some of them lost their property to those boyfriends while others had their relationship uh, relationships with their children and relatives destroyed God raised me to guide his special children to realize that they could live a righteous life with God as their husband, providing for them and through the help from the umbrella. Isaiah 54, verse 13. I had uh, left this, the singles, they need to uh, hear this also. So we are in the right ministry. This morning, we are going to go into the Word of God. I, I, I told you yesterday that I am not jumping because the jumpers are there. Me, I just talk. The jumpers are there, so I'm not going to jump. Uh, don't say, why is she not jumping? I'm not going to jump. I will talk uh, as, as a mother because the jumpers are there. God has richly blessed us with jambas, and so why should I jump? Uh, I need just to talk. You can only jump when you go in the bush where there's nobody to jump, but not here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shall we go back again to Psalms 119? Psalms 119. And we read verse 105, 105, where it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I know that we know this scripture and many times we memorize it, but I am praying in my heart that the Holy Spirit will give us a deeper understanding of this scripture. Amen. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We mentioned something yesterday about this scripture. Word of God, the Word of God. And we go to verse 130, where it says again, the entrance of your words gives light. Now here, it's not just the light to my physical feet, but we can see now that it is our spiritual feet, not light to my physical path, but our spiritual path. 
and for my physical, for my spiritual feet to have the lamb that will not make me to just bump around anything. I need the lamb of the word of God. And to walk on my way, not the physical, but the spiritual. When you walk the spiritual, the physical will also join what the physical, what the spiritual is doing. I need the word of God. And here it says again, the entrance of your word gives me light. When the word of God has entered into my life, into my spirit, it makes me, the word of God makes me to see because it's light. And uh, it also gives me wisdom, which shows that we need the word of God in our lives. Uh, when we were here on Sunday, we said the word is the revealed mind of God on us. The mind of God on us is for us to know it, it's his word. And the word is the revealed will of God for our lives. It's the mind of God for our lives. It's the will of God for our lives. Which means to say, when God uh, created man in his own image, he said some things, some principles, some rules by which the spirit man who is the image of God created after his own likeness was going to function. Even though man fell, but when Jesus uh, came, he redeemed the man that had fell, that had fallen. But the redeemed man that had fallen, then God still requires that redeemed man to know the mind and the will of God upon the redeemed man. Are you, are you following me? Are you beginning to see something? Now, what God requires of this redeemed man, it's in his word. The redeemed man, when he walks, there must be a lamp for him so his feet can uh, not just bump in everything, but can see where the redeemed man is going. The redeemed man needs light in the path that he is walking so that he won't get lost, but he will focus on the way. And this lamp and light for the redeemed man, which is the will of God and the mind of God upon the redeemed man, it is the word of God. The word of God. I am going to uh, read from the book that our Father was led by the Holy Spirit to write, Integrity of the Word. When we read in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And everything that we see was made by the word. Without the word, nothing was made that, we, that was made. 
And then it goes on to say, in him was the life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines out of darkness, and the darkness cannot overpower the light. And this light is the word of God. And this word of God is, is also Jesus. Because then in verse 14, we will hear uh, the scripture telling us that the word became flesh and it dwelt among us and we beheld his glory as that of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So we want to find out about this word that we have seen that is the mind of God on us. His revealed mind on us is in his word. His revealed will upon our lives is in his word. And here we have here, the word of God is sincere honest and wholesome. Some people, even believers, take the word of God for granted, and yet God's word contains all we need. God's word contains all we need. I need to know the mind of God on me I find it in the Word of God. I need to know the will of God on me. I find it in the Word of God. Not only that, all we need, including salvation. Salvation is in the Word of God. Not only that, uh, rebirth, our rebirth, is in the Word of God. When we read John chapter 3, we will see that in verse 5 it says, Unless one is born of the water and the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And we will see that the water resembles or represents the Word of God. And so it's the Word of God and the Holy Spirit that make us to be born again. And what has made us to be born again has become now our food, our light, our life, our everything. Are, are you following me? Why am I taking this time? I could have jumped and said, well, the word of God, the word of God. But we, the, the, the cry of our Father is for us to understand. And so, so our rebirth is in the word of God. And our eternal life is in the word of God. Our healing, both spiritual and physical or emotional, is in the Word of God. Our deliverance is in the Word of God. Our sanctific sanctification, the way of being made holy, which takes a process, is in the Word of God. Our inheritance, inheritance from our Father God that he has prepared for us, is not found anywhere else. It's found in the Word of God. And this is why we are to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit who will now make us to understand or to see or to have the revelation 
of the inheritance that our Father has prepared for us that is hidden in the Word of God. The inheritance is hidden in the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit, His business, His work, uh, his, uh, uh, he is, his responsibility is to reveal to us, to open our spiritual eyes, to see the inheritance that is hidden in the word of God. Are, are we together? <laughs> are, are you struggling with me? Because when we get to understand this, as this is the cry of our Father, all the other things we will be above them. When we get to understand this, I won't take the word of God for granted. I will make sure that I have read the word of God. The word of God is the food of the spirit. And for it to feed my spirit, I need to read it every day. And not just to visit there, but to say, now I am eating. Like we eat physical food. We find where we are staying there. They put everything on the, on the table, and they put a chair. We don't eat while standing. We sit down and say, now, this is the time to eat. And we see everybody getting busy to eat. Why? Because I know that my body needs this food. So I can have strength. When you don't eat, you get weak. And you find you cannot do anything because you, you, are, you are hungry. You don't have any food. Sometimes you say, no, I will wait to do this until I have eaten so that I can have the strength to do this. Because the physical food gives the physical body strength. In the same manner, the spiritual, uh, the spirit gets its spiritual food from the word of God. Which means to say, I need to read the word of God. I need to give time, like I give time for eating. I need to give time to the word of God to say, this is now my time to eat the word of God. I know we are working so many jobs. You have to create time for the word of God. By profession, I'm a nurse, and there are so many nurses in there. When I was on night duty, I would read the word of God during the day, either before I sleep or after I have woken up before I go for work in the evening to make sure that I have fed my spirit with the word of God. And I would pray sometimes before I sleep, if we were not busy, before I sleep, I would pray and pray and pray until I said I prayed. But if I was busy and I'm feeling sleepy, I would sleep and then 3 o'clock I am up, I am now praying, 3 p.m. I am up, I am now praying, getting ready to go for work. But having fed my spirit with the word of God, having gotten into the roots of Jesus Christ, so I can suck that which is going to sustain me through the day or through the night. And when I left that, now I am home. I have to make time for the word. And what did I do? I decided to say, okay, some, uh, around about 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 
please, Holy Spirit, wake me up so that I can read the word of God. I can feed my inner man, my spirit, with the word of God. Because in the word of God, this is where everything is. And then read the word of God, and five o'clock, begin to pray until six o'clock. When noise comes, the noise is now coming, but I'm already prepared in my spirit. I have the light in me, the strength in me to walk the journey through the day. Recently, uh, we were, I think we were, was it? I think we were in UK. Then I woke up five o'clock instead of waking up earlier. And as I did that, there were some things that were, that were happening that we needed to fix. And from there, I, I, we went to the gym. From the gym, we bathed. Uh, we went to, uh, to have some breakfast. From having the breakfast, we came and we were busy, busy doing something. This is me, do, do, doing something. Some things that were, that were around me, that we were doing. And you know what? In the course of time, I, because I had not prepared my spirit, I had not fed on the word of God, I had not found some time to be with the Lord. I just woke up and I was in the things. I bumped into things that day. I bumped into things. If you want to, you, I had accidents. Many accidents in my life that happened because I did not have time to feed on the word and also to pray. I didn't, I didn't have that time that I normally have. And I had a very miserable day. And I just wish for the night to come so I can now find some time to do that. This is what happens. It, it only happens to me. It doesn't happen to you. It only happens to me. Uh, so I have to be careful uh, that uh, I have to wake up and make sure that I prepare things or else I bump into things. Uh, are we together? I'm traveling with two things here. So we need to read the way. It doesn't matter I am working. It doesn't matter I have children who are crying or babies. I remember the other time there were some things that I needed to do. There was a baby, our last born. There she was crying there, and I had to take this one to hospital, and I had to come and cook and do this and do this. So my time was mixed up. Then when everything else was quiet, and now it was 1 a.m., I said, now I can have my time with the Lord and read the word of God and began to pray. Why was I doing that? So that I am not drowned with the things. Because when you are drowned with the things, you don't want any pressure. You don't want any, you, you just talk anyhow. I know you don't do that, but me, that's what I do. You just talk anyhow. And so it is very important to make time for ourselves so that we can read the word of God and have time to pray. It doesn't matter I am waking and wake, but I have, like, I give myself time to eat the food. I must give myself time to read the word of God so that I will not bump and have many accidents. And sometimes you find that... Uh, <laughs> Okay. Uh, the words that will be coming out of the mouth, they will be just hitting like that. You don't 
don't want anybody to, you are tired, you, you can't hold it anymore, you can't, and this thing, they keep on pushing to you, and you feel the pressure of them. Why? Because when they were supposed to be wed, the wed did not go there. And so these things, they are just penetrating. Are, are we together? The importance of reading the word. Now, as I am reading the word, I am not just reading. I know that in the word, this is where all what I need is. We have said it. All what I need is. Even my spiritual growth is in the word. When I don't read the word, I don't grow. And when I don't grow, what happens? I fix my eyes on the people instead of fixing my eyes on Jesus. Then I begin to say, people, they don't see me. People, they don't do this for me. People, oh, people, uh, 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 people, have you ever been admitted to hospital? Or have you ever had a child who is sick and nobody comes to see you? Have you ever done that? Nobody comes to visit you, and, or even to phone, to say, how is the baby today? Nobody phones. Then if you are not grown up, what do you do? You begin to say, ah, these people, they don't love people. They have never, I, I went into problem, and this is what happened, this is what, this is what I do, this is what I used to do, and I try to avoid that by staying in the word of God. They didn't do this for me. They didn't do this. They didn't. Ah, these people, they don't have love. Nah. They, they, they select. They select. They go to their own friends. But when I'm reading the word of God, and I'm growing, and I'm growing, and I'm growing, and I'm growing, I will be able to stand and say, my eyes must, fear, must focus on Jesus. And I will understand. I will say, I don't know, maybe the Lord is going to, is, is trying to teach me something in this something that is happening. I will not see people and begin to blame people. Then I will say, Lord, if you are trying to test me or to show me something, give me the grace. And as I continue in the word of God, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. I'll find I am above it. Oh, I gave such, such a thing. Oh, ah, to uh, Mama Guti, and she never came to me to say thank you. Now, what is this? But when I read the word of God and I'm growing, I will say, by the way, Mama Guti was just uh, an instrument through which I could give or a vessel through which I could give, but I have given my God through her. Then I won't need that uh, thank you, or to even have a QQ of talking to say, you know what, you do this and you spend all your money, and uh, they never come to say thank you. Ooh. Why am I sharing this? I went through all this. I went through all this, but thank God that he had opened my eyes through the word of God to know that when I give, I don't give to people. I don't give to people. I don't, I don't give to people. I give to God. But then I cannot see God anyway. God is in the people. Then I give through them, but focusing on God. And God who sees me is the one who is going to reward me. But you cannot do this without reading the Word of God. The Word of God. Like we eat breakfast, like we eat uh, lunch, like we eat supper for our physical body, that's how we should feed our spirit. And our Father was teaching us to say, if you cannot find time to read the Word of God, Read four, at least four chapters a day. 
not a verse, but four chapters a day. And he was saying, you read one chapter, he was saying, he still says it, you read one chapter in Old Testament, not to go and pick somewhere, but you begin to say, now I am reading Genesis. Then you begin with Genesis chapter 1. And you read one chapter in the Psalms. You go to Psalms 1 and you read. Now Psalms is a, a very easy book. You can even read more than one chapter. But reading more than one chapter in Psalms does not make you to say, now I have read so many, so this is it. No, this is just the Psalms that you have read. Then you go to the book of Proverbs, which is the book of wisdom. Ooh, I don't know whether you have been. Uh, sometimes I get shy when I read the book of Proverbs because I find myself I'm being spoken of there. And then I say, ah, ah, this is me. You read one chapter of Proverbs. Then you go to the New Testament. You read again one chapter. If you are starting with uh, Matthew, you read one chapter of Matthew. How many chapters do we have now? We have four of them. And when you are fasting, like we are doing, you read Isaiah chapter 58. Why do I read Isaiah chapter 58? Because it tells me the kind of fast that is pleasing to God. I don't know whether you have found it. I think it happens only to me. Uh, you are fasting, and there are some things that are happening that, will, that I find myself now. I'm, I'm, instead of keeping quiet and knowing that my mouth has got to fast too, I, I begin to quarrel with people. Why did you do this? La, 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 la. It doesn't happen, happen to you, it happens to me. Yeah. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah. When you are fasting, and by the time you get to the time of your breaking, then you, you, you say, hey, was I fasting or what? Now, the book of Isaiah 58, it tells you that the one who is fasting uh, does not have that opportunity now of, uh, of, uh, of using his mouth or his mouth, her mouth, in, the, in a rough way or uh, have, having some strife with people. But if I don't read that chapter, then I won't know it. But if I have read it in the morning before I fast, then I will be careful to say, uh -huh, I want my fast to be before the Lord. Now I better behave myself here. That this is the book of Isaiah 58. That is its purpose. So if you are fasting, that means you have to have five chapters a day. But you can go more than four chapters. Four chapters is just the minimum. But you can go more than four chapters. The more you read, the more you have the word in you. And the word is the nutrient or the food of the spirit. And the more you read it, the more as you read with some understanding, you begin to grow. Sometimes when you are reading the word of God, you don't understand what you are reading. That does not mean to say the word is not working in you. The word will be working, some nutrients will be going into your spirits. Okay, have we ever, have we never uh, eaten food when we did not have the appetite. Why did we eat? We use our mind to say, I need some strength. We find it sometimes when a person is ill or sick, we say, please, just get a, uh, a few uh, tablespoons of some porridge or whatever it is so that you can gain the strength. Then they say, no, I don't have the appetite. Yes, you don't, you don't have to wait for the appetite. Just push in some food so that you can have the strength. In the same way with the word of God. It doesn't matter I don't understand it. I just read. 
I don't understand. I just read. I don't understand it. I'm not grabbing anything. But I'm not wasting my time. Something is going into my spirit. Something is going into my spirit. Then there comes time, of course, that I need to understand. This is why when I'm reading the word of God, I need to pray to say, Holy Spirit, open the mind of my understanding. I'm now reading the word of God revealed to me. What, what is in what I'm reading? And the Holy Spirit, many a times, he will be faithful to do that. Hallelujah. Are we done with this now? When I read the word, I need to believe. I need to believe. And I need to apply the things that I am reading. Okay. The word of God also gives us faith. Faith. Romans chapter 10, verse 8, it says, but what does it say? The word is near you, even in your mouth. Uh, that is the word of faith that we preach. Then it goes on to say that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe that uh, uh, God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. The word of God. It gives faith. The word of God. Okay. Are we together? The word speaks to us as Jesus would if he were visibly among us. If Jesus was in person, like I'm standing here, and he comes and stands before us. What is written in the word is the same thing that he would say to us. And is the same thing that he would teach us. What the word of God teaches us is the same thing that Jesus, if he was in person, would teach us or would preach us. So the word, the word speaks to us as Jesus would if he were visibly among us. So when I'm reading it, I don't want to read it like I'm reading uh, uh, the, what, what do we call, the, the, uh, uh, yes, you can say novel, or just the words that have been put in black and white here. But I must know that this is Jesus now, through his Holy Spirit, speaking to me. And when I do that, I will find that the Lord Jesus will reveal to me through his Holy Spirit what he is saying in his word. And the word takes his place. The word takes the place of Jesus. When I'm reading it, I'm not just reading it. It's Jesus now who is talking to me through his word by his Holy Spirit. Spirit <laughs> are we together? The word has the same authority as you would have if we were to appear uh, if, he, if he, Jesus, were to appear before us. The authority that Jesus has is the same authority that is in his word. Even if he is not there in person, but his word still holds the same authority, the same authority that Jesus holds. If Jesus was to be here in person, we would see that the same authority that is in him as he says his word is the same authority that is in his word that we read from the word of God, that we read in the Bible. 
has the same authority. And Isaiah 55, verse 11 says, Isaiah 55, verse 11 says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not come back to me void. It means it shall not come back to me without doing what it has been sent for. But it shall accomplish in what I please. It shall accomplish in what I please and prosper in the thing that it is sent for. I know somebody is saying, Mama, good, what are you trying to say? I'm praying that you will understand me. So shall my word be that comes forth from my mouth with the same authority. It shall not come back to me void. Have you ever sent a child to go and look for something? In our home, we knew is that if you send some, some so-and-so to go and look for a thing, she's going to come back without it. And she will say, I didn't see it. I didn't see it. Then she said, didn't see it. It's there on Sunday. No, I didn't see it. Okay, she goes again and she looks and she comes back and says, no, I, I didn't see it. Now, the word of God does not do that. When it is said, it will not come back until it is, it is accomplished what it has been sent for and until what, what the owner who has sent the word until that thing has been done, and then until that thing has been accomplished, and until that thing for which the word has been sent for is prospered. The word is not going to come back. It will come back to report to say, all is done. The word of God. The word of God. All is done. Aha, uh -huh. I sent you for healing. And so and so has been healed. He sent his word and healed them and he delivered them from their distractions. Then the word will go back to report that I have healed and people have been saved from their distractions. This is what the word of God is saying. It shall not come back to me void. When I know now that this, this is what, what the word of God does. And God is a slave of his word. When I speak the word, I need to believe that it's done. I need to believe. When I speak the word, I mustn't just say it lightly. I must say it with Faith. Faith. I know. Okay. Faith. In, sim in symbol, our father was teaching us about faith the other day. And uh, it was in connection with the visas of uh, Israel. We were still in. Where were we? We are still in Israel, and we are discussing to say, now, we need, we need visas to come back again if the group that is coming. Because this one that we have is only single entry, and once we get out, we will need another visa. But we were in Israel, and we knew there was no time to go to Zimbabwe because we had to come here. And so we discussed, and we said, but we need the visa and not one entry. It must now have multiple entries. 
And we said, where can we get it? And we were talking in waterfall. We were talking. We were talking. And then we said, okay, we will, uh, we will send the, the, our passports uh, to um, Nairobi, where we can get the multiple. Now, uh, we will do this. We will now go to uh, Australia quickly so that we can have enough time for sending somebody to Nairobi, Kenya. And then that somebody will come, out, will come back with the passport that they got, visas. But can you see the expense there? Then, uh, 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 Dr. Jarita said, can't we have it in Canberra? And I said, you ask Elder Wala before we do anything. So Elder Wala said, oh, okay. And then she said, I will phone myself. She phoned to the Canberra uh, Israel Embassy. And they said, yes, we can do it. Now, we had, we had two things here. We were now saying, okay, what if... What if it doesn't work? Now, we were trying to make another provision of still going to Nairobi. Then as we were talking and we were talking and we were saying that, then Baba said, you know what? Faith, if you have two minds, there's no faith there. Because we were saying, if this does not work, then we will do this. That means there's no faith there. And he said, you have to speak one thing and stick on that one thing. Then you get the results. But if you say, if this does not work, now, now we will do this. I don't know whether you have done this, that too or I've done that many times. And from that day, I said, oh, this is why I'm missing things, because I'm always having two provisions. If this does not work, I will do this. Then he said, you have to stick on one thing. Then I said, OK, OK, OK. OK, we are going to stand with you. We are going to get the visas in Canberra. Come what may, we are going to get the visas. We joined his faith. He had his faith, but we were Having two options, and two options is not ten. It's like when you are throwing a dart, a dart, those who play dart, there's a dart board and there's a ring, a, 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 a ring in the center. When they throw, they are throwing, if they are throwing, aiming to go into the center, the dart will go into the center. But sometimes they throw anyhow, and the dart just falls anyhow in the dartboard. Does, Does that help you? you? Did it help you? Yes. I, I said I'm not going to jump. Wow. I'll just stay with you, please. So we have the word of God. And the cry of our Father is for us to understand the importance of the word of God in our lives. And to know that all that we need, even as we talk about the kingdom of God, all what we need in the kingdom of God, even if the kingdom of God is spiritual, is of the Holy Spirit, but all what we need for the Holy Spirit who is in the kingdom of God to be able to work on us, we need the word of God. We need the word of God. Ah. I can see something. Like our father wants to understand. When we know the importance of the word of God, do you know that there will not be three jobs to do? Do you know that? There will be only one job for me. And that one job will meet all my needs. And this is when I will get time now to have quality time with my children. 
because I have one job. When I understand this, I will not talk with my children, telling them stories that are in the world. I will ground them in the history of my church, in the history of my leader. I will ground them in the word of God. Amen. That time that I have with them, I will do that. So that as they grow, because the word of God also says it, train up a child in the way he should grow so that when he grows, he will not depart from it. That's the word of God. Now I am teaching and I am believing. Then I know that my child, as she, he grows, will not depart from it. Even if the devil tries to take him, but he will not stay in there, he will come back to the word. Because the word is inside. The word of God. The word of God. Ah. The word of God. Our Father here says, the word of God is always now. Now. Because Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, it says, now faith is. The word of God is always now. And Ezekiel 12, verse 28 says, Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord, Ezekiel 12, verse 28, None of my words will be postponed anymore. Ha. Are you seeing the mind of God on us? Are you seeing the will of God on us? Our Father God loves us, loves us very much. But you know what? The devil blinds us so that we don't see it. He knows that if we understand this, he has no chance. He knows. But then he tries to keep us busy. He tries to say, ah, why read the word? Just read one verse and then you can go and sleep. Because he knows the importance of the word. Once we know this, God himself is saying, my word cannot be postponed anymore. Cannot be postponed anymore. But the word which I speak will be done. The word which I speak will be done. The word which God speaks will be done. The word which God speaks will be done. When God, when I speak the word of God that I have, that he has himself spoken, I am repeating what he, is, what he has said. It's like I am playing back his step to say this is what you said. And he says, yes, I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. Are we getting help? Amen. The word of God. It has, got, it has got our everything. The word of God is Jesus himself. Because Revelation chapter 19 verse 18, what does it say? He was clothed in the robe that had got, that was dipped in the blood and his name is the word of God. Who was that who was dipped in the blood? Jesus Christ, when he was crucified. And his name is the word of God. So the word of God is Jesus himself. And what he says, he will not deny it. It has the same authority. It has the same power. But now our problem, our, what we need to work, what I am working at, is to have that faith that will be like a, that pin that is going right at the center. Is to have that faith that does not have two minds to say, if this does not work, I will do this. But that focus is to say, this is it, this is it. it uh, is, uh, 
as it is according to the will of God, he will do it. He will do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The word of God has been and the word of God is and the word of God will be the voice of God. The word of God is the voice of God. When I am reading the word of God, I am listening to his voice. Um, uh, the other day I laughed uh, uh, when I was reading this. I said, but because we don't understand this, that this is the voice of God, and we don't understand that this is the mind and the will of God for us. What do we do? We run around looking for prophets to prophesy over us. What does God say about my life? I've come to find out what does God say about my life. And yet it's there, prepared for me. What does God say? Um, uh, oh, there's a prophet there, I'm going there. What does God say about my in-laws? What does God... Uh, if we read, they will find the in-laws, they are there in the word of God. What does God say about uh, my workplace? Uh, uh, what, uh, 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 prophet, prophet, please. Uh, prophet, prophet, please. And the prophet will just utter what he thinks. <laughs> and we believe it. And yet the great prophet, the word of God is here. We don't believe it. We need to read the word of God. Trust the word of God. This is the treasure that God has given us. The treasure that God has given us. Ah, the word of God. Did you read the story that John the disciple of Jesus. He read the word of God in so much that when they put him in oil that was boiling, nothing happened to him. He suspended like a paper because he was full of the word. Full of the word. Full of the word. Daniel, when he was put in the lion's den, the lions, they, smell, they did not smell Daniel. They smelled the word of God. And his friends were put in the fire. The fire could not burn the word. Because the word itself is fire. It could not bend the word. We have an example. My beloved, our father wants us to understand this. Then we won't be tossed around. Then we won't wet our pillows because we have no hope. I cannot see my future. Because this word is light. Not only light, this word is the voice of God. Not only the voice of God, this word prophesies. It tells me what to do. I need from today to begin to read. Not just anyhow, but methodically. And as I read with the prayer inside, of wanting to understand. This will cause me, even when I am praying, I won't pray what I think. I will pray the word of God. That means to say I'm declaring the word of God. And when I declare it, he cannot refuse what he has said. When I declare it, the, the devil will know that no, the owner of the voice is here. This is the voice of God chasing me out. I have to go. Because the word of God, Hebrews chapter 4, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, 
the word of the well, the word of God is powerful. No, the word of God is living, powerful, sharper than any other two-edged sword, piercing even the, the divisions of the soul and. So what else do I need? That's the word of God. You know, when we have the word of God that is a, a power that is alive and powerful like that, what they say, what the society says about the situation does not work. Because we will declare the word of God and believe the word of God. And the word of God is yes, God's creative force in it. God said in Genesis chapter 1, let there be light and there was light. Let there, let there be division between the light and darkness and there was division between the light and darkness. The light was the day and the darkness was the night. Let there be firmament of the waters, and there were firmament of waters, and the waters were divided, and they, some, they went to the sea, and there was land here, and there was sea there. The word of God. The word of God. The word of God. When we know that, it has got such a creative force. We will declare and things will happen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Even when we pray for the apostle and servant of God, if you declare the word of God, you have prayed the perfect prayer as long as your faith is connected with the word. I, from the day I discovered this, I don't have my words. I say his word. Lord, thank you very much. We praise you and glorify your name because you are the shepherd of Ezekiel. You are the shepherd of Ezekiel, your servant. Thank you, Father God, that as you are his shepherd, Ezekiel will not lack anything. Shepherd, you know the work of the shepherd is to make sure the sheep find some grass to eat. Ezekiel will not lack anything. He will not lack even divine strength in his body. As it was with Moses, that he was 120 years, but his natural vigor never got diminished. And his eyesight never got dim. So shall it be, Father God, with your servant Ezekiel. The natural vigor will flow into his body day by day. It shall not be diminished, and his eyesight will not get dim. I have declared the word of God. Thank you, Father God. I won't go into the prayer that I pray. But I declare the word of God. I declare the word of God. Thank you, Father God, that you cause Ezekiel to lie down in green pastures where he feeds himself. Thank you, Father God, that you lead him beside the still waters where he drinks the living water and fills up his fountain with living water that bubbles flowing into the lives of the people whom he meets day by day. Amen. Thank you, Father God, that you restore his soul. Thank you, Father God, that you make him to walk in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. 
thank you, Father God, that even though he walks through the valley of the shadow of death, Ezekiel will fear no evil, for you are with him. You are his light. You are his salvation. Of whom shall he fear? You are the strength of his life. Of whom shall he be afraid? For your rod and your staff, they comfort him. Thank you, Father God, that you even prepare a table before him in the presence of his enemies. You anoint his head with oil. His cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow Ezekiel all the days of his life. Ezekiel shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you, Father God, that you watch over your word to make it happen. Have you, for you are not men that you should lie. Neither are you the son of men that you should repent. Have you said and will you not do it? Have you spoken and will you not make it good? I say the word. With, I am playing back to God what he is saying upon Ezekiel. And what does God say? He says, yes. Yes, it's me who said this. It's me who said this. Thank you, Father God, that your word says, those who trust in you, you are their shield. Ezekiel trusts in you, therefore you are his shield. All the things that are planned, the walls, that, do you know that there are walls, the walls that we see, they are not planned here, they are planned in the spirit world of darkness. And nobody goes there to see except God himself. And when we declare the word of God to say, you see what is planned in the spirit of world of darkness. We thank you, Father God, that because Ezekiel trusts in you, you are his shield. What does the shield do? Protects. When the spears, the missiles, the blows come, they cannot reach. Because there is a shield here. There is a shield here. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There won't be those prayers of saying, Father God, please, please, please. You know that is because you are servant. Please, please. No. No. Especially in the year of thanking. I declare the word of God. All I need is to declare it, connecting my faith with the word and with the person whom I'm praying for. Then I find things happening. Thank you, Father God, that you are his shepherd. As you are Ezekiel's shepherd, we thank you that you give him finances to do your work. We thank you for the divine provision of finances to Ezekiel, your servant, to do your work. For he shall not lack because you are his supplier. But at the right time, you give him the necessary finances. When there is need, they come. And sometimes when I see God doing this, I say, oh, my one inch of prayer is there too. Because we've declared the word of God. The word of God. Thank you, Father God, for the manifold wisdom that you give him for your work. For the knowledge and understanding that you give him because of your work. For the great revelatory spirit that you give him for our sake. On and on and on and on and on. Yes, your word says it, Father God, that he that dwelleth in the secret place 
of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I thank you, Father God, that your servant Ezekiel, from the day that you picked him, you have never left him alone. You cannot leave him now because we know that he dwells in your most secret place. And therefore, we thank you that he is abiding under the shadow of you, the Almighty. God cannot deny you. This is, but we cannot do that when we don't read the word and memorize it and meditate upon it. Do you know that when you memorize and meditate upon the word, it becomes more life to you? Amen. This is what our Father wants. And this is the mind and the will of God for us. So let's go and do it. Let's go and do it. Hallelujah. Ezekiel shall flourish like a palm tree day by day. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And because Ezekiel is planted in your house, Father God, we thank you that he shall flourish in the course of God. For even at his old age, he shall still bear fruit. Is that scripture there in the Bible? Yes. He shall still bear fruit. He shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright and that he is a rock to those who trust in him. So he is a rock to Ezekiel. Ezekiel trusts in the Lord. And there is no unrighteousness in him. Thank you, Father God, that you keep Ezekiel like an olive green tree in your house. And Ezekiel shall trust in your mercy forever and ever. I am declaring what he said. All he will be saying is, yes, I said that. Yes, I will do it. Yes, I said that. I will do it. I will do it. I will make it good. I will do it. I will make it good. I will do it. I will make it good. Because it's his word. Hallelujah. Did I not grab somebody's time? I didn't bring my time. Thank you. I better stop here. I think I, I went over the time. Sorry for those me. Hallelujah. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Let's clap hands for Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 